On today's Toy Spot, we are having a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Marvel's Venom Wave. We're looking today at Evil Adversaries Electro. Electro comes with a pretty ridiculous looking head sculpt, but rest assured he does also come with a more classic Electro style. He also comes with the interchangeable, or I shouldn't say interchangeable, he does need that. He comes with the other leg for Venom that we're building currently. Inside of the box, we've got a classic look of Electro. On the other side there, Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin. Which I also might add was the harder to find figure, from, for me at least. The back of the package shows you an image of the two characters with a very small read-up saying powered up and bent on revenge these menacing villains are powerful opponents. Down below several different Spider-Mans, a Spider-Man and Ultimate Spider-Man available, Electro, Marvel's Silk, Spider-Girl and Hobgoblin make up a very small wave only consisting of six figures and in this case you need all six figures to build uh, your Venom here. To check out more from Hasbro, head over to www.hasbro.com forward slash Spider-Man, and you can also check out Marvel.com as well. Spot's going to take a break and get this opened up. When we come back, we're getting a better look at Evil Adversaries Electro. There's more anyway, guys. Don't go anywhere. Electro comes with the other leg for Venom. It's the exact same leg, just flipped around, just the opposite side. Let's go ahead and grab the figure, take the leg, making sure, of course, it's going the right way. The last thing you'd want to do is have the leg going this way or just having the legs switched. And we'll just pop it into place like so. I can already tell you, much easier than the previous Build-A-Figure that we've had a look at on this channel. Stacking up to actually be a decent looking Venom. Just need arms, obviously, and a head. But uh, once that's good to go, then we're good to go with a fully completed Venom. I don't know why I, I did this like I was ringing the dinner bell. Come on in, guys. Dinner's ready. We'll go ahead and move the figure to the side, and let's resume our reviews, or this review, of Electro. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's start with the head. Okay, let's start with the head. The head, I'm not crazy about. I don't think it's a terrible sculpt, don't get me wrong, but I just don't like Electro looking like this. I'm more a, tr a traditional, a purist, if you will. I like Electro with the very ridiculous uh, star-shaped head, which he also doesn't come included with as well. I know it's a ridiculous look, and maybe by today's standards, people would say, oh, why? He looks like, he looks ridiculous. I kind of like that. I like that look more so. Let's look at the pros though for this head. The eyes very nicely painted in in almost a metallic blue color, which you would think it would get lost in the star formation that's filled out on his face and eyes. But surprisingly, the blue still does a good job of standing out. Another pro, I like the fact that they've given him a exposed teeth uh, on the mouth as opposed to having a closed mouth or a very neutral expression which sometimes can bog down a line when you have multiple figures with zero expression. This figure does not have that. It has good expression. And actually, even if you don't want this particular head and opt for this head, which is what I'm going to go with, he even has a nice devilish smile on his face. So it's not neutral. It's something. It has a little bit of extra expression. I like that. Uh, I think actually for the sake of this review, I'm not going to kid myself nor am I gonna sell myself short to you guys, the viewing audience. I mean, truth be told, I like this mask, this face much better. I'm just gonna change it to that, call it a day. There we go. I mean, if you like this, you know what? Let me know down below, which head sculpt do you like more? Do you like this one? Which I guess is a more updated look, and do you, or do you like this one? I, pff, pff, right off the bat, this one. It's my preferred choice. So I think just for the rest of this review, we'll stick with this one. We'll call it a day. But we won't call it a day. There's still much more review to talk about. Electro, unfortunately, is plagued with just a lot of... Oh, Electro. He's kind of like the guy who comes and spoils the party. You kind of thought in the back of your mind that somebody would have invited Gary to the party, but you're like, nah, Gary won't show. 
Oh, crap, Gary's here. And then he comes and he just spoils the entire party. Electro means well, I think from a figure standpoint, he means well, but ultimately, I feel like he is just slightly disappointing. The biggest, or I guess the best thing I like about the figure is the thing that we just looked at, and that's the head sculpt. I like that, but the rest of the body is... It's debatable. For starters, I do commend the fact that Hasbro would have given him the electricity hands, which carried over from the Amazing Spider-Man line where we got that movie Electro having the very same hands. They come across almost more like water, his hands more from water than electricity, but I do like the electricity that they have extending out from his fingertips. A very soft plastic, doesn't seem one that I would feel that it would break, so at least that's good. Um, and I, I like that it's translucent. I tell you what I don't care for is why these were the only options available. We have gotten countless Marvel Legends. In fact, Spider-Man, notorious for this. He comes with tons of hands, webbing, interchangeable heads. We can just make a list of all the things that Spider-Man does come with. Why couldn't Electro have come with more than just these hands? I mean, a lot of people will likely display him with it. And you think to yourself, well, gee, Spot, it's pretty cool that he's got these hands. I mean, I would display him with these hands. Would you display with these, these with him with these hands? I would say, yeah, I probably would. But let's say I don't want to display him with his hands up or his hands out, which are both equally fittable... Uh, fitting ways to display figures with hands like this. Let's say we just had his hands down. And say I didn't want to have electricity on them. Well, you're pretty much stuck with it. You don't get extra hands with them, which I think is a slight slight detriment to this figure. Why he could not have, for all the Spider-Mans, why we could not have gotten regular hands for this guy. Cool hands aside, I, I know they're cool why we couldn't have just got regular hands as well. So that if you did want to switch them out, you could have done that. He is also utilizing, speaking of Spider-Man, he's utilizing the same body sculpt as Spider-Man and therefore also has the same shortcomings. The Iron Fist from the Dormammu wave, we also had a look at this figure and it had the same body build. The torso isn't so bad, this part isn't so bad, but you have a big glaring issue when his when his abdomen area and his I guess pelvic area is thinner than the thighs. Humanly, 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 that's not really possible. I guess it could be. I mean, you could be somebody that's extremely anorexic, and maybe you might look. I don't know. Maybe the maybe it might look like that, but it looks awkward. The fact that his his stomach sticks in further than his thighs, where the joints would be for his thighs. Now, I'm sure there's people that would say, well, gee, it's only a figure spot. Like, you could, I mean, why nitpick a figure for something like that? Well, to me, though, it does, it does hold merit to point it out. Because from a front view, it's not so bad. From the side, however, it does look very noticeable. The yellow that's making up the majority of his lightning bolts down the front and along the back don't seem all that finished. They seem more finished on his arms where it has a good, bold sense of paint finish and just layer to it, but the back comes across like it's not as finished. Areas like around the very thin waist, uh, the yellow looks like it hasn't been put on or maybe a second coat would have been required. Not that somebody would go back and then apply a second coat of paint to a figure, but it looks like a second coat could have certainly gone a long way. Notable, notable things to point out as well is that the yellow on his boots are a completely different yellow than that of the lightning bolts. His mask and his boots match, but this area right here is a completely different yellow. Something that they should have probably factored in. When it comes to his posability, yeah, it's about what you would expect ball joint head, but he also has the additional hinge here, allowing for maybe not a pose that you're going to necessarily put him in, but a pose you could put him in if you so wanted to. 
Because he also makes use of the same Spider-Man mold, he has the shoulder crunch that is not present on most Spider-Man figure, or most Marvel Legends figures, really except for Spider-Man and like characters that are generally more athletic and like acrobatic. So Iron Fist had it because he had that little shoulder crunch area, made use of the same body, bold, body mold. Uh, the arms are, are still on a hinge, despite the fact that there's that crunch there. A swivel bicep, double bend elbow, that can't, that can't be good. Um, he has a swivel on the wrist, a hinge on the hands, upper torso crunch, waist swivel, ball joint legs, swivel cut thigh, double hinge knees, a pivot in the foot, and an ankle pivot as well. Because this also makes use of the exact same mold as Spider-Man, you're going to get what I like to call the duck bill feet. The feet look like duck bills. Just putting that out there. All right, let's just kind of run down the pros, run down the cons. The pros. I like this head sculpt. This one is okay, but as a purist, I like this head sculpt. I like that. Another pro, I like the hands. But Spot, you just said, no, I like the hands. I like the hands. And uh, I like that they gave him a, a skinny body build. Cons, I wish they, they could have came under with some interchangeable hands. Not for the, the idea that I don't think these are cool, but just so that you have options that if you wanted to take him out and just have neutral hands, you could have done that. Spider-Man had so many, Electro's got none. The very thin area on his abdomen where his legs jet out even further, that could be a little problematic. And the paint area around his torso doesn't match that of the boots, doesn't match that of the, of the mask. It's kind of a middle figure. I think my favorite still is the Marvel Select Electro that came as a Disney Store exclusive that came with the Spider-Man. I did a review of that. Go check it out if you want. Um, that is my favorite Electro to this day. This, this Electro delivered well, but it could have been better. I think at the end of the day, it could have been better. You're like a middle-of-the-road Electro. Thanks for coming out. Today's Toy Spot, we're continuing our looks at the Marvel Legends Venom Wave. And today, we're having a look at Electro. Electro. We'll just we'll go out on a high. We'll, we'll just stop with the little negative points. We'll go out on a high. Thanks for coming out, Gary. Couldn't have had a party without you. Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> Spot's got more videos heading your way. Of course, we still have to finish Venom. That's our, our main focus at this, at this present time. But more videos are heading your way. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.